ahead of his final full day in office, Barack Obama using his executive power one last time and drawing attention to an important chapter in the history of these past eight years. The outgoing U.S. president commuting the sentence of Chelsea Manning. Manning, who back in 2010 so, fed troves of classified documents to WikiLeaks. Senior Republicans denounced the U.S. Army private as a traitor who endangered the lives of operatives and undermined national security. For supporters, he's one of several high-profile whistleblowers whose cases expose injustice in a nation that recklessly decided to invade Iraq. Uh, when he entered office, Obama had a mandate to withdraw from Iraq and draw down in Afghanistan, which he did on day one. He also signed an order to shut down the extrajudicial prison at Guantanamo. That, to his regret, did not happen, uh, nor would he show leniency uh, for Edward Snowden, whose Moscow exile has just been extended. A United States that was tired of war would, during these past eight years, mostly stay silent when it learned of ever-increasing drone strikes, with anger abroad an acceptable price to pay for fewer boots on the ground. What will Obama's legacy be on security and on surveillance? Today in the France 24 debate, pardon my whistleblower, with us, Zachary Miller, who is uh, producing and directing the upcoming film Countermeasures, unveiling the global surveillance state. Thanks for being with us. Sure, thank you. Uh, journalist Paul Morera, uh, who's been to Iraq and Syria on several occasions, uh, his most uh, recent documentary, you can still see it if you have Arte, the Franco-German channel, uh, on catch-up, Syria, the Confiscated Revolution. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome. We'll be joined, we'll be, we're joined as well uh, from Belgrade by uh, human rights attorney, uh, Renata Avila, thanks for being with us here in the France 24 debate again. Uh, the you. France 24 debate where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, the hashtag F24debate. It was 2010, one of WikiLeaks's biggest data dumps, troves of files and video that showed most notably how U.S. forces mistakenly killed Iraqi journalists in Baghdad back in 2007. Very quickly, a culprit would be found. Bradley Manning, who in prison would change gender and become Chelsea Manning. Emerald Maxwell has the story. After spending seven years in prison, Chelsea Manning will be freed. The former military analyst responsible for the biggest intelligence breach in U.S. history saw her 35-year sentence commuted by Barack Obama on Tuesday. She's now set to be released on May 17th. A transgender woman formerly known as Bradley Manning Chelsea Manning leaked over 700,000 classified documents and diplomatic cables while working for the U.S. Army in 2010. These included details of prisoner abuse, confidential information, and a video showing a U.S. helicopter indiscriminately firing at civilians, killing two Reuters staff. Manning was charged with treason and espionage and was sentenced to 35 years, the longest punishment ever imposed for a leak conviction in the U.S. On Tuesday, Julian Assange tweeted his thanks to those who had campaigned for Manning but made no mention of whether he now plans to surrender. Earlier this month, WikiLeaks, the organization which published the diplomatic cables, said Assange would agree to U.S. extradition if Obama grants Manning clemency. Manning was among 209 people who saw their sentence commuted by Barack Obama on Tuesday, but his clemency didn't extend to Edward Snowden, the former intelligence contractor who has leaked thousands of confidential security documents to the press since 2013, nonetheless thanked Obama for Manning's commutation from Russia, where he has been living as a fugitive. The White House has said that Snowden's disclosures were far more serious and dangerous, and that unlike Manning, Snowden hasn't acknowledged his crimes before a court, nor submitted the necessary documents for clemency. And we're pleased to be joined by uh, another guest uh, who is with us. Kyle Orton is in We're All in England, a research fellow at the Henry Jackson Society. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. Kyle, I'm going to read to you uh, reactions from Capitol Hill. House Speaker uh, Paul Ryan uh, stating uh, that President Obama now leaves in place a dangerous precedent that those who compromise our national security won't be held accountable for their crimes while uh, John McCain, the head of the Armed Services Committee in the Senate, saying uh, it is a sad and perhaps fitting commentary on President Obama's uh, failed national security policies that he would commute the sentence of an individual that has endangered the lives of American troops, diplomats, and intelligence 
sources. Now, it wasn't a pardon. It's commuting a sentence. He's been in prison for seven years uh, so far. Kyle Orton, your, your thoughts on, on President Obama's deeds? Uh, it seems McCain and uh, Paul Ryan are about right. It it just sends a very bad message. It would be bad enough at any time to be giving lenient sentences to people who hand classified information to hostile foreign intelligence services. But at this moment, when Russia is so brazen as to interfere in an election in the U.S., it's just a really, really bad timing and a really bad message. Renata Vila, do you agree? I completely disagree. I think that the opposite will be will send a wrong message, uh, given the times that we are living in. We celebrated, uh, 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 even if not as happily, because uh, uh, for the commun- human rights community and activists for freedom of information and access and right to truth, uh, what we consider we consider this uh, case completely invalid, completely wrong. Uh, it is uh, recognized by international human rights standards. Uh, that the revelation of gross human rights violations, like the revelations uh, exposed by Chelsea Manning, it is it is uh, an obligation. It's a, it's a right to do so, and no one should be persecuted or prosecuted uh, because of exercising that right. On the contrary, uh, depriving the victims and the, and, the fa- and their families uh, from the truth of how the, the, the relatives were killed, how they suffered, uh, and who is to blame uh, for that, it is an act of torture in, in itself. So I think, uh, uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that uh, um, what uh, President Obama did was to correct a gross mistake and to basically save a life of someone who was at risk All given right, so the, the, the conditions of, in the prisons of US, yes. There's two different issues, obviously. There's his conviction and there's the way he's been treated uh, in prison. Those are two separate things. But again, Zachary Miller, I'm going was... to read to you uh, what John McCain said, which is that he endangered the lives of American troops, diplomats, and intelligence sources. Mm. Well, first, that has never been proven. I'd like to see some evidence for that. Uh, aside from that fact, the fact that he has served seven years, any judge in the, in the country can give a sentence that they feel that they, that they deem correct. In this case, uh, President Obama commuted the sentence, which limited to the seven years that he has served already. So that is quite enough. And in fact, uh, our country owes a debt to whistleblowers. Uh, and we should distinguish between whistleblowers and people who truly commit treason. Uh, people who do cl- truly commit treason. Again, Kyle Orton, uh, is this an act of treason? In- it comes very close. I mean, there's no doubt really now that WikiLeaks is a front for Russian intelligence. And Manning handed to them more than half a million classified documents. At, at this point about whistleblowing is completely to miss the point. I mean, a whistleblower tries to minimize the damage they do and tries to expose specific limited wrongdoing after trying to complain up the chain of command about it. Manning didn't do any of that. Manning leaked these documents to WikiLeaks after having only acquired them for several months. And he just dumped the documents out there. He'd never read them. He didn't know what was in them. I mean, even if you wanted to give him credit for exposing some kind of wrongdoing, he didn't know he was doing that when he did it. So it's it's not whistleblowing. It's an act of gross irresponsibility bordering on treason. Paul Marrera. I was I was actually as a journalist, I was I had the chance to uh, to be inside the Iraq uh, war logs. Uh, uh, scoop. I was. I could film when they made it public in in London. I was with Julian Assange, and I don't know. Something is so obvious that he was uh, Bradley Manning was exposing uh, wrongdoing. I mean, actually, you see those pictures of an helicopter, an Apache helicopter, opening fire on civilians. I interviewed one of the soldiers that came to try to help, American soldiers that came to try to help the civilians that were inside the bus. They were children. They were refused access to an American hospital. The, 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 the soldier was so shocked by, by the order, of, by, by his hierarchy, that he became a peace warrior after that. I mean, if it's not exposing wrongdoing, that's showing a war crime like that, and, and then I would like to ask a question, which is a moral question. What is the criminal crime? In, um, is, is there any kind of judicial procedure engaged against the guys who open fire on civilians and journalists? Um, 
I know that Manning was on, in jail, but what happened to them? Do we even know their names? Renato Villa? Well, I would like to say that uh, for me, uh, you know, as Pablo Picasso painted that painting of Guernica, for me, the video collateral murder that uh, Chelsea Manning revealed is the Guernica of our times, you know. It is this image. You don't, you don't even need to go deep into the details of the Iraq war and the false evidence that led to it, the Iraq uh, war. Uh, you, you, by just seeing the video, by just seeing how uh, uh, mechanical the, the, the previous the life of someone outside uh, U.S. soil uh, has become, it, it, may, it makes you realize that who, who is in reality in danger uh, American people. It is the people revealing uh, these ground doings, so or the people engaging actively in killing innocent, ex right, executing extrajudicially uh, innocent people. All so right, but I want, I, I want to pick up. I want to pick up on, on something that uh, that was said by Kyle Orton because it is important. Uh, the <laughs> fact, the way in which uh, these troves of documents were dumped, there were intelligence officers who had their covers blown uh, by by WikiLeaks and Paul well, Moreira back in two thousand and ten. Of course, it, that was something that we only started to become aware of. Times have changed since when it comes to these big data dumps. They're not done the same way. No, they're not. But frankly, I, I mean, I, I, I took uh, really close scrutiny of, of what happened after the publication of the Iraq war logs. And I don't remember any name or any concrete case of anybody that was exposed or endangered or killed or maimed because of, of the exposure of the cables. Really, I've read, mo not most of them because there were so many, but I've, I've, I've read a lot of them. It was very technical. I don't see, I mean, there were no names of translators. Translators are really the ones who are in danger. And I can give you a list of translators that we have uh, <laughs> forgotten and, 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 and not uh, taken care of and are in Afghanistan or in Iraq now and are known by the insurgency and, and they are in danger. I have, um, I may be wrong, but so far no name has been given of any victim due to the publication of, of the of the war logs. Kyle Orton, the, ch the charge being there that uh, mm -hmm. from several of the panelists that uh, the dangers uh, or the recklessness, as, as some call it, uh, of the way these documents were dumped has been overblown. Yeah, I think that's very silly. I can give you one name, which is Argo Rashin. He was an Ethiopian journalist who had actually been working with the U.S. to try to avoid a crackdown by that autocratic government on the press. And he had to flee his country when his name was revealed in the document saying he'd had contact with the U.S. embassy. Uh, Morgan Svangarai, the leader of the Zimbabwean opposition, was investigated for treachery after these leaks because he'd been in contact with the U.S. as well. Two generals in Zimbabwe were court-martialed because they'd had contact with the U.S. diplomats and they'd criticized senior officials in the government. Uh, China had a wide-ranging crackdown against academics. I don't have their names to hand, but there were a great number of them. And they widened it to include basically all oppositionists, especially Tibetans and the Muslim Uyghurs. I mean, these things went on. As Syrian human rights activists were the same. This was a, an extremely dangerous thing to do and extremely irresponsible. And it, it just, that should be admitted up front. You can say the, it did all these other good things if you like, but it was an act of recklessness by somebody who didn't know what he was doing, was not acting in the best interests as the panelists would like him to have been. It, it was for own personal selfish reasons. And a lot of other people paid the price for it. That is incredible to say that it's for his own personal selfish reasons. That, I think, is silly. Now, the fact is that he exposed a wrongdoing by our troops on some occasions where people did not have to flee, but they were killed. He exposed killing of journalists, of individuals who were innocent. Now, this, why aren't you so upset about those things that happen than you are about somebody having to flee to another country because their name was exposed? See, now, these are the things that bother me. We're talking about, uh, um, today, uh, Ryan was talking about uh, the fact that this is... Uh, Paul Ryan, the Speaker. Paul Ryan, the Speaker of the House. Uh, we, he wasn't so upset about this former Speaker who got a very lenient sentence for sexual child abuse. You know, I mean, we've got to get our ideas in order here. What are our priorities? These are people who are being killed. This is a person who exposed that. 
he should be applauded for having brought out to the information. Now, the one thing you talk about, chain of command, there is no chain of command. That's the whole problem. With a whistleblower has something to convey to uh, authorities, they don't listen to him. I've interviewed Thomas Drake. I've interviewed Snowden's attorney. Uh, these people went through all kinds of situations in order to try and, and put information out there to the authorities. They were ignored. That's the fact. We need a whistle Maybe we need a whistleblowing system that works. But until it, doesn't, I, until it works, though, the only opportunity they have is to go to the journalists, to go to the media. Snowden, Snowden sent one email, one email before he leaked the data, and it was on a silly administrative matter. It was not about anything to do with wrongdoing at the NSA. Uh, um, Just FYI. Renata Vila. Yes, I have an important point to make, and it is everyone says, like, uh, everyone puts all the responsibility in Chelsea Manning. In fact, this database, with all this very sensitive information, as they claim, uh, was available for up to one million people with clearance. And like, if information is shared already with one million people, and if these people are entering the embassies, I mean, uh, entering the embassies of the United States, probably the most surveilled place without any caution. I mean, of course, the intelligence of the of the uh, states already knew, already were fall. I mean, with, with this uh, leading by the example, this incredible and scary architecture of surveillance uh, led by the United States and the NSA and uh, its allies, uh, it, it makes practically impossible to do activism or to even be an informant uh, in these times. And it, one it, should consider that it is public, so, uh, that it, it was available to so many people. Tell me, like, yeah, so the, the argument now, the Chelsea, uh, Chelsea was the only person to disclose these crimes on the public interest. I don't know if uh, any of these million people with access to these documents uh, disclose it for a private gain. That we will never know. But uh, again, again, I mean, if we if we go back to, of course, every time you disclose hundreds of thousands of documents, there's always a risk. But if we go back to uh, the, the the benefits that could have. Uh, brought about uh, in terms of, of, of um, in, in terms of morals, in terms of politics. I mean, we, we know mm -hmm. like something like the Frago order, which is something that was discovered inside the documents, uh, allowed allowed the massive use of torture uh, by uh, by um, Shia uh, militias where, that were within uh, the Ministry of Interior in, in Iraq. That is, uh, uh, that is something, that is a policy that really uh, helped <laughs> develop the, the ethnic uh, strife, uh, confessional strife, that, that brought about hundreds of thousands of dead people. So you establish hundreds of thousands of victims thanks to those documents, yep. and it has no impact. And uh, maybe, maybe I, I'm, I may say I'm not aware that three people had trouble, judicial trouble, because of, uh, of, uh, of those documents that, for me, were Iraqi-centered, mostly. But if we put that in the balance with hundreds of thousands of deaths, what you can, you can uh, you know, source back to elements that were in the documents, that's unbalanced. All right, we're going to pick up on that point. When we come back, stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate. We're looking at President Obama's uh, legacy when it comes to whistleblowers and also security, surveillance. We're doing so in the company of Zachary Miller, who produced and, and who's producing and directing the film Countermeasures Unveiling the Global Surveillance State, which is out sometime this year. Sometime this year. Sometime this year. Okay, <laughs> we'll be looking out for that. Uh, as well with us, journalist Paul Moreira. Uh, his documentary for uh, the Franco-German channel Arte is called Syria, the Confiscated Revolution Welcome back uh, from We're All in England, Kyle Orton, Research Fellow at the Henry Jackson Society, and from Belgrade, Human Rights Attorney Renata Avila. Welcome back uh, to all of you. Uh, before the break, uh, Kyle Orton uh, mentioning uh, the accusations flying against uh, the WikiLeaks co-founder uh, Julian Assange, critics today calling him, uh, for many, a uh, stooge of the Russian government. Uh, 
especially after uh, the leaks uh, put out against the Democratic Party. Um, he still holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London last week. Uh, the group tweeted, if Obama grants Manning clemency, Assange will agree to extradition despite clear unconstitutionality of the Department of Justice case. Well, uh, in a further development uh, to that, uh, he, uh, they've put out a new tweet uh, this uh, Wednesday, which says he's still willing to go if uh, his rights are uh, guaranteed. Paul Marrera, uh, the star power of Julian Assange has definitely gone down since the mm -hmm. Chelsea Manning uh, uh, leaks. Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, WikiLeaks has been uh, less uh, visible and uh, it was difficult to keep up with the pace of the beginning because it's such a revolutionary way of treating... That is, isn't that the key element here? <laughs> Keeping up with the pace. It seems like nobody's been able to keep up with the pace of this data. The military has not been able to keep up with it. And the leakers themselves uh, have had a hard time managing this new power they have. Of course, but... But it's also a new thing, you know, Panama Papers was about that. I mean, it's, it's the, the digital revolution mm. allows you now to have access to massive amount of data and, and citizens or uh, journalists can, can go into it and, and take out, you know, some interesting stories in the public interest. So sometimes it's WikiLeaks, sometimes it's ICIJ, but I think that the, this new frame of, of massive stash of data is going to be... Um, it's going to be here to stay. We're going to have to cope with uh, this new reality. All right. And this new access to loads of data, uh, as we can see, it, to a certain degree, could have helped to uh, second guess the result in the presidential election in the United States, Zachary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of things that can second guess the um, uh, election in the United States, aside from the Electoral College possibly being an outmoded inst institution. Uh, aside from the fact that, you know, uh, Hillary Clinton uh, had almost three million more votes, uh, we also have the... Oh, but those were the rules, okay? Yeah, those were the rules that we planned uh, that, that, And we've had this the, happen the twice topic, in the last... The topic here years. is these yeah. revelations that uh, really uh, undermine the Democratic Party. Yes, and there's probably uh, more to come. There's, uh, there's all kinds of things out there. I just want... Is it, is the, it a good thing or a bad thing, this new era of transparency? I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because basically uh, we have a situation now where uh, the government can easily <laughs> put us under surveillance. So it's it's kind of a good thing to have, a, excuse my pun, a countermeasure to uh, have uh, some things be transparent about the government and about people who are, are uh, you know. Uh, Even if in this case, uh, critics say this is something that serves Russia's interest more than the United States' interest in the latest well, case. Well, I just want the truth to come out, you know. Uh, this we may find out a lot about Russia, you know, uh, and and this kind of thing coming out too. So I, this particular instance, you know, is one thing. I'm talking about just in general. In general, transparency is better than uh, having things too hidden. It was a Supreme Court Justice Kyle Orton who said sunlight is the best uh, disinfectant. Do you agree with that? In theory, unfortunately, that's not what we're getting. I mean, you get, you can see, as the guest just mentioned, I mean, at some point, maybe, hopefully, possibly, we'll get something on Russia. That hasn't been the case so far, though, for the simple reason that Russia has orchestrated most of this. Uh, I, this new era of transparency is nothing of the kind. It's it's a, a new era of disinformation, and it's, it's extremely dangerous because, I mean, your guest said that our governments can just spy on us and can just monitor us for no reason. I mean, that isn't true. That's not what the NSA revelations themselves showed. So I, I don't think that this brave new era of transparency is going to serve the cause of freedom at all. I think it will serve some fairly hostile and dictatorial governments around the world. Uh, your, your thoughts on this, Renata Avila, because uh, I've had lawyers on the show before telling us how uh, when it comes to uh, how the law keeps up with uh, the digital age, we're way behind the curve. Yes, I, I agree that we are uh, way behind, not only law, but also 
uh, we do not know yet as a society, like half a billion people, like the half of humanity is still not connected, uh, but uh, slowly getting connected and uh, being recipient of uh, this vast amount of information and knowledge. It's not only the, the data domes, but now as humanity, now people everywhere, regardless the income, or regardless the uh, fine universities that they may have access to or not, have the opportunity to uh, uh, have a more critical, uh, well-informed view about uh, what happens in the world, what happens in their country, and how uh, information affects them. Uh, that's one of the great contributions of Chelsea Manning. Like, uh, 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 her whistleblowing uh, enabled and confirmed many of the things that uh, people, not uh, just to move uh, a little bit away from just the US centrism of this debate, uh, uh, shed light into corruption in those world countries that are all uh, that, uh, that you mentioned before. Uh, so, uh, in that sense, I think that we are entering um, a new era, and we need to develop. We need to uh, strengthen our human rights frame for all, and have uh, better protections, universal protections, to defend not only democracy of a country or not only to put us in two sides. I think that it is a process where uh, the superpowers have to be a little bit more humble and prepare that uh, people who they have, uh, who the West have systematically oppressed are about to come online. Right, and let me, let me... Are, will, will be able to expose the, the gross human rights violations that the West has inflicted in so many countries. So... Palmer, Palmer, Renata Avila making the case for a global legal framework for all of this, uh, for be for more transparency, but it doesn't look like the news cycle no, uh, I, is I, going that way. I, I don't think now we, we are able, I mean, even though it would be great, I mean, but uh, I don't think we're going to into this direction. But just to add a little something to our friend in London, I must say that uh, I'm, I'm just working right now on Russia and uh, I found out that there's a group of hackers called Shaltai Baltai that came about with a huge stash of uh, email from uh, Putin's cabinet. So it's, uh, it's, uh, you can go on the internet and you can read it if you want to. So I don't think, I mean, this argument of saying it could play into bad hands, you know, I, I'm, I'm heading an investigative um, press agency in, in France. We do, uh, we do work for TV. And sometimes people tell us, yeah, you know, you, you, the results of what you do, it plays onto, into the game of the national front. But, I mean, what do you want to do? Do you prefer to lie, to hide the truth, to hide corruption, <laughs> to hide political problems in, just in the hope that maybe people won't vote for the national front? I'm not playing it. It's just you have to choose between trying to find the truth and lies. All right. So the decision uh, to commute uh, Chelsea Manning's uh, sentence showing uh, a softening in the final days of his, uh, 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 of his administration by Barack Obama. It's cheered on from Moscow, uh, where NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden tweeted this. Let it be said here in earnest with good heart. Thanks, Obama. The praise, though, won't be enough to sway the White House to pardon Snowden, who is a fugitive in Russia, where his visa has just been extended for another three years. The Obama administration says uh, for him to be uh, pardoned, he must first ask for clemency. We believe that under any circumstances, uh, Mr. Snowden should return to the United States and face the serious crimes that, with which he's been charged. Uh, he will, of course, be afforded uh, the kind of due process that's available to every American citizen who's going through the criminal justice process. But the crimes that he's accused of committing are serious. And, um, and we believe that he should return to the United States and face them, rather than seeking refuge in the arms of an adversary of the United States that has their own strategic interest in disseminating harmful, or disseminating information in a harmful way. Zachary Miller, you agree? Uh, no. Um, first, you know, he isn't in Russia by choice. He was trying to go somewhere else before he was trapped in Russia. That's one thing that's always brought up, like he's in the hands of our enemy. Uh, he didn't want to be there. Second. Uh, there is no guarantee that he would, uh, uh, there, there are people in the NSA that there are people that have been calling for his death, for his execution. Uh, he would be walking into a, 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 a landmine field if he were to come back under these circumstances. So, uh, no, I don't think he should come back. I don't think it's, re it's reasonable for, uh, to, uh, to think that he would want to come back under these circumstances.
Right. He's, he's been very, he's been one of the leakers that has been very, very extremely careful about making sure there was no damage. Uh, when the information he, he uh, gave to the Guardian and other uh, press organizations, he was very, very careful into making sure there was no damage done by his leaks. So I think it, that's even apart from what uh, uh, Manning did. Uh, Kyle Orton, do you do you tar uh, Edward Snowden with the same brush as uh, you do Chelsea Manning? Uh, Edward Snowden is a slightly different case in that he's a defector, isn't he? Which is different to what Manning did. It, M Snowden's leaks potentially did less immediate damage than Manning's. They obviously did devastating damage to the intelligence system, and they did expose agents and this kind of thing. Uh, but he is a defector, which is different to just Manning, who handed over a lot of these things. Uh, Snowden, by the way, isn't in Russia... It is in Russia by choice, and it was WikiLeaks that told him to go there. He was never intended to go anywhere else. I mean, the story he's put out about the passport being cancelled on the way to Moscow and him having no choice is uh, simply a fabrication. There was a plane uh, that was that was uh, grounded of, uh, I believe it was the Bolivian president, uh, because uh, they thought he might be on board that plane. I mean, he, he really did seem to want to go to Latin America at some point. No, he was always going to Moscow. WikiLeaks, as I say, has now confirmed this. Uh, as I say, the uh, defectors to Russia never come back. So whether Snowden wants to come back or not, it's not in his hands now. He'll he'll die in Russia. Renata Vila. Yeah, it, it was confirmed and it, it, it is uh, proven that uh, Edward Snowden was heading to Latin America. The tickets, the tickets were to Cuba. Uh, as you remember, all the journalists were waiting on the other end, and it was the state uh, uh, who cancelled. It was uh, Edward Snowden State who cancelled the uh, passport. Even, 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 it was a, there was a launch, a, a European-wide operation to down to impede that uh, Snowden exercise his right to seek his human right to seek asylum after uh, engaging in political activities that will. Uh, mean uh, uh, endless persecution and, and, uh, and a political persecution back home. So, uh, but uh, I, let's uh, pay attention at the case of Evo Morales. It is unbelievable, unbelievable that in complete breach uh, of international law, uh, Europe, together with the U.S., down the pre down the plane of a head of state. And it is. It it, it also brings. Uh, um, it it is clear evidence of the constant collaboration of European nations with the U, uh, U.S. in renditions and uh, in launching uh, drone attacks from uh, European soil, and many other uh, very corrupt uh, and very damaging um, operations, joint operations, endangering at the end of the day. Uh, damaging and undermining the European human rights system and the universal human rights system. So it is important to bear in mind when assessing the risks and the, and the damage that uh, is caused, these kind of breaches. Meanwhile, uh, in the upscale Kalorama district of Washington on uh, Tuesday, a moving van was spotted. This was in preparation of uh, Barack Obama's uh, move out of the White House coming up on a Friday. There you see the images there. When it comes to uh, security and surveillance, Paul Morera, uh, we talk about Obama's legacy, right? And we've talked in this show about how there's been a big learning curve, not just for the present, but for the whole world when it comes to uh, new ways of doing warfare, new ways of spying, and new ways of getting information out. What will Obama's legacy be? Well, I don't think we can say it's Obama's legacy. I think it's it's uh, <laughs> the way uh, society, technology, uh, communication technology has developed so far, and Obama has just followed the trend. I mean, the, the, the Russians are as much setting the pace of, of this uh, evolution and, and this situation than, than, than Obama. I think nowadays we live, it's true, in a world where information war, cyber war, is uh, definitely um, probably the major battlefield uh, of the future. And uh, it's, I don't think it's linked with Obama. The, the, it would, be, would have been a president, it would have been exactly the same, the same thing. It's, uh, it's our new world. You agree it would have been the same had it been another president? Oh, yeah. Increased I, drone warfare, well, uh, increased surveillance? Well, I, I do agree. Uh, the fact, though, that, you know, 
drone warfare, when you look at drone warfare, when you look at the surveillance, we have these te te technologies. 99% um, of the people who get in that office are going to use them, you know? Uh, so I think there wouldn't have been much difference uh, with another president uh, using these technologies. But when we're using, when we're talking about drones, for instance, um, you know, drones are meant for the enemy. They're not meant for the innocents. And so that's where you have to draw the line about how you use a drone. If you use a drone on the enemy, okay, that's war. But if you use a drone and you're getting what they call collateral damage, that's not right. That's not something, it's not something that we try and not do. It's something we should not do. You know, it's something, not something we should uh, be uh, just, you know, we wouldn't go and just spray our, our, bomb uh, a country. I'll put it to Kyle Orton. Are we getting better now that we have these new lethal uh, uh, toys at our disposal? Are we getting better now at distinguishing what humans do best and what machines do best? I'm not sure about that, but we're, we're probably in an awkward transitionary phase. I think we are getting to a stage where certain things are going to be taken over by machines, so uh, there will come a point where air forces are no longer needed because you'll just have uh, drones. I mean, I have to agree that Obama's overused drones in troop Japan, and a lot of people don't like that, so it's very difficult to know, and he has to weigh these alternatives. H has to weigh the alternatives. The fact is, Renata Avila, there's a lot of public support for this because, well... The other option, and uh, we all remember it, is to, uh, is to send troops. And uh, people just don't want to go off to war anymore. And so if a machine can do it for them, they like it. Well, there's always the other choice. And the other choice is not to have seven interventions during an administration in different countries. I think that uh, by uh, engaging in diplomatic dialogue, effective diplomatic dialogue instead of armed interventions in foreign soil with total immunity that is acquired by basically uh, bullying parliaments, national parliaments, to uh, shield them, uh, uh, their, the soldiers and the operatives with uh, total uh, no responsibility and, and labeling crimes as uh, war crimes as collateral damage. Uh, I think that we are getting uh, very fast in a way that peace is not an option. And that shouldn't be the way that we are, uh, uh, that uh, the US diplomacy, Russian diplomacy, Chinese diplomacy is, uh, is, is, is being just the third choice. And the first choice is always intervention, uh, armed intervention. And we have, as humanity, we have uh, serious problems to worry about. Uh, and that we need uh, to act upon as soon as possible and w do it together instead of uh, engaging in yet more wars. But of course, war is a lot of money uh, for the elites that are currently basically controlling, that are in many cases above the governments, uh, financing, financing elections and so on. So uh, in my position, my position is that, that uh, I think that uh, a well-informed public can uh, make a big push against these armed interventions. Uh, hospitals, universities, and so on need a lot of resources in the U.S., and uh, as well as in so many countries. Mm. And uh, I think that uh, uh, less inequality will bring us more peace than uh, more drones and sophisticated machines that, uh, to kill. Paul Marrero, final point on this. Do you sense uh, a blowback against technology? Well, uh, two journalists in my agency did, uh, Benoit Abranger and Jean-Baptiste, uh, did a documentary on drones. And uh, I discovered through their investigation that the next step with drones is going to be software that uh, will identify uh, the license to shoot. Because, you know, now, nowadays it's people in Nevada, they, mm. they watch. They watch through cameras and uh, they decide to shoot or not. And uh, so the software will like uh, assess, uh, let's say there are four people in the car, they all wear beards, uh, they have Kalashnikov, uh, they're perceived as enemy combatants and uh, the machine will decide by itself to shoot and kill. And that's going to be in the next years. And I think it is very scary because in certain countries, uh, wearing a beard and a Kalashnikov is like wearing a shoes. You know, it's <laughs> all right. It's cultural. That is a. I, I, 
That is, yes, her, I that, that is a scary say, prospect. Paul Marrero, I want to thank you. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I want to thank Renata okay. Vila for being with us uh, from Belgrade, thank Kyle you. Orton from Wirral, and, uh, of course, Zachary Miller. Stay with us, though. Our Media Watch segment is next. And we say hello to James Creedon. Hi, Francois. So as you can imagine, a lot of uh, reaction on social media uh, uh, to the debate uh, topic. You can see that there was, of course, a huge push uh, for, for, for months and years even to have Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning, uh, the, to have uh, him pardoned, her pardoned. Tell President Obama to free Chelsea Manning for hashtag time served. And so that campaign, of course, you know, has now borne fruit. Delighted to see Chelsea Manning's sentence has been commuted. Obama has bravely recognised that love for your country can take many forms. And that's from George Monbiot. And Guardian, yeah. Indeed. And, <clears throat> of course, uh, a lot of people as well very angry with the decision. Uh, you're seeing a, a divided um, reaction online. Obama just pardoned a treasonous traitor out of prison. No surprise, a, a traitor pardoning a traitor. So lots of people unhappy as well uh, with the president's uh, decision. Uh, saying that Bradley Manning betrayed his uniform and our country. So this is, this is country. interesting. So yeah. uh, they, they're using the hashtag Bradley Manning, so denying the fact that the person wants, uh, that she's now a woman. Exactly, indeed. Essentially, the criticism uh, for uh, Chelsea Manning is under the hashtag Bradley Manning. So you're seeing a kind of uh, an alignment of people who don't uh, agree with uh, uh, the fact that... Uh, she has had a sex change. Uh, uh, there's an alignment of the, with that opinion uh, and uh, uh, those unhappy with uh, the decision. Uh, people calling Chelsea Manning the mastermind behind WikiLeaks ought to read up, uh, says Victoria Brownworth. WikiLeaks manipulated Manning and let her take the fall. So that's more about the details of uh, the, actual, uh, the actual leak. Uh, commutation or not, could we please stop showing dishonourably discharged Chelsea Manning in uniform? It disrespects our uniform hashtag US Army. So that's, I suppose, a, a different angle in terms of the criticism, and it is somebody using uh, the preferred name Chelsea Manning. Uh, elsewhere, um, uh, this again is a critical uh, tweet. According to Obama, if you steal and disseminate 750,000 pages of government documents, you don't need to be held accountable. Now, one person who was... She, she's been for seven years in jail. Right. Yeah. Which, uh, Including two in solitary. Which, indeed, uh, as that first... Uh, um, tweet um, issue mentioned uh, yeah. seeking his fr uh, freeing on the basis of time already served. Edward Snowden tweeted um, and unsurprisingly uh, very uh, congratulatory in five more months you will be free thank you for what you did for everyone Chelsea stay, stay strong a while longer says Edward Snowden and of course many people making reference on social media to Edward Snowden Julia Assange and others saying please grant them a pardon as well in a similar manner now, of course, we saw that, uh, uh, that uh, Edward Snowden will, it appears, now be staying longer in Russia uh, for uh, his residency rights were extended for two more years. Glenn Greenwald, who, of course, uh, was one of the journalists responsible for uh, facilitating Edward Snowden's uh, data dump, uh, saying that uh, this really mocks the idea that uh, Snowden may have been given as a gift to Trump. I wasn't even aware that that was uh, being discussed, but <laughs> clearly there was some sort of a, a discussion about what uh, exchanges could happen in terms of uh, maybe an ap apaisement of, in the relations between Washington and Moscow. Yeah, uh, th thanks for that uh, uh, very much, James Creedon. I want to thank our panel once again. I want to thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate. <laughs>